Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy, Worst Effing Gamer, and I know the game of Soul Hunters got a lot of tough decisions that you have to make. Who's the best physical? Who's the best tank? Who's the best backliner? All these uh, questions are good questions, but when it comes down to Awakenings, once you get to level 90, it's a very tough decision. This could put you back a couple of weeks if you make the wrong decision, guys. Uh, believe me, some heroes are a lot better Awakened than others. So I'm going to try to break down my top 10 list for you guys right now, and I'm sure that it might help some of you guys out there make the right decision and get some extra wins in the arena all right so stay tuned for my top 10 awaken the heroes all right guys so awakenings are a big part of the game they completely change the game once you hit level 90 everything changes a lot of heroes that are not as good become a lot better some heroes kind of stay the same with an awakening and uh some heroes are just as bad as they were before, all right? So um, knowing what hero is going to change a lot, is going to help your team out, is crucial in the game. So I'm going to break down my top 10 right now, and let's begin with number 10. All right, guys, so coming in at number 10, we have Kara, the enigmatic killer. Kara is actually one of the best magic heroes in the game, and she's really, really good in the arena. Her only flaws are she's not that great in Hall of Legends, um nor is she good in the raids but she is very very good in the arena guys specifically because the arena right now is run by physical and she's only one of the only magic heroes in the game that can actually withstand some physical attacks and dish out a ton of damage uh, first of all her ultimate will pretty much take out a single target hero and one shot the exception is a couple of heroes will resist her ultimate all right so you got to find out which ones resist her ultimate petros or rayman there's a few others that I can't think of right now, so just keep that in mind, all right? Flower Beam is going to deal magic damage to a single target. Um, Nightmare is actually a pretty good ability because it's going to put uh, your enemy into sleep, which is really, really good. They, are, they will be frozen until they're actually hit with another attack, so that's actually pretty good for the arena. Kiss of Death is also another great ability because it will reduce physical attack and freeze them for a short period of time, alright? So now let's break down the awakening since this is an awakening video. So her awakening is going to, the first time Kara is near death, she will take a potion which puts her into a deep sleep for 5 seconds while sleeping. She is immune to damage and recovers some health. This is a sick ability guys because instead of her dying, she actually goes into a deep sleep and then she comes back with a good amount of health which makes her obviously last a lot longer by the time that she gets back usually the opponent is attacking somebody else so she pretty much gets off a good attack off and sometimes she even gets her ultimate off so it's very very useful it will help you out in your arenas believe me she's a great hero to have but specifically for the arena if you are looking for something that's more well-rounded maybe something for um hall of legends or raids then stick around there's other people for that, but for the arena, she will be great. And that's why I have her at number 10. All right, so coming in at number 9, we have Sylphie. At 1, Sylphie was renowned as the best hero in the game by far, guys. When she was first released, she was incredible. She had an ultimate, and uh, everybody was using her in the arena, in the raids, and in the Hall of Legends. So she was great all around. She's a great Crucible of Fire hero as well. Uh, breaking down her abilities really quickly, her ultimate is going to uh, shoot out a bunch of swarms, a bunch of spirits that roam around and deal magic damage to everybody. It's a really good ability and when it's over, she actually gets some health back, which is really good. Flapping Wings does AoE damage to the whole entire team and it also deals extra damage to summoned units, alright? So she's pretty good against summoned units. She's got a Silence and Unbreakable uh, Resolve is if she gets hit with... Uh, uh, an attack that's 20% of her max health she will buff her magic and physical armor all right so she's pretty good her abilities are nice but let's take a look at her awakened ability here sorceress medallion this is why uh she is actually the best magic hero in the game because she's got this medallion that nobody else has in the game she's the only one it's an aura that gives all teammates uh with the medallion um increases their magic pierce rating all right so the medallion that we're talking about is this medallion right here all magic heroes that have this medallion will get an increase in a uh, magic pierce rating which is great and pretty much all females in the game have it so it helps out a lot of other heroes that's kind of what makes Sylphie one of the best heroes in the game now she is no longer the best hero in the game but she's still really really useful in a lot of situations she's still useful in the hall of legends 
not so much in the raids anymore but you can still use her in the arena most of the time all right so she's still overall very useful so be sure if you have a uh, silthy work on silthy guys and awaken her pretty fast <laughs> All right, at number eight, we have Gorum. Gorum is a, a really great tank. First of all, he takes the cake for one of the best cards in the game. I mean, look at his card. It looks phenomenal. I love it. But this is not a pageant show, so he doesn't get any points just for looking awesome. Now, we have to judge him on his skills and his ability in battle. He's really good in the arena. He's very good in the Hall of Legends, and he's great in the raid. So, what more do you want? He's usable all around. One of the best tanks for all around usability. So that's why I put him in at number eight. What makes him really good is not only does he dish out a ton of damage, but he's also able to sustain and take a lot of damage. Uh, let's break down his abilities really quickly here. So he's got his ultimate is distorting blow, which uh, deals AOE damage to everybody. And then an aftershock, which hits another enemy for more damage, which is really good. Uh, allies of chaos. This one, he summons three illusionary versions of himself. This is pretty cool. They help out in a lot of hall of legends that's kind of why he's you know that's his niche he summons illusionary units in the front and helps you out tremendously especially for crusher that is a big help entropy here is going to increase his physical crit rating and also giving his other abilities another effect as well it could decrease physical armor by 330 and if it's a crit it's going to deal additional damage to the enemy winds of fate is an attack that hits a random enemy and it also stuns them um this is kind of strange because it stuns them for a random amount of time and it hits a random enemy so it, it can always vary but it's a really good ability as well as stun on a hero is a very nice now let's take a look at his awakened ability here divine shield uh gorm's attack have a chance of collecting magic fragments from the enemy giving gorm a magic shield once he has the shield collecting more fragments will be further strengthening his shield so he can absorb more damage uh this is really really sick now the only catch is this collects magic damage and if this guy was collecting physical damage he would be one of the best tanks in the arena right now because physical runs everything but whenever the meta changes to magic i feel gorum will actually become even better in that era so i feel he's got more potential to come all right so this divine shield is going to become a lot more useful for him in the arena if the meta changes so like i said before gorum is not only good in the arena he's great in the whole of legend guys you can use him in your raids um he's pretty much in every uh boss raid team that there is so He's a great hero to have if you have Gorum. Awaken him as soon as you can. If you don't have him yet, be sure you get him when he comes out. All right, and at number seven, we have Rayman, the lovable Rayman. Who doesn't love Rayman, right? The only people that don't love Rayman is your opponents because this dude is a pain in the anus to try to beat in an arena. He's so tough to beat. He's got some crazy abilities that actually give him extra life. And he's just really hard to hit. He's very hard. Kara, he will resist Kara's ultimate, which single target, you know, it's hard to hit him. Let me just tell you guys in the arena right now. The problem is, you don't really use him in raids and you don't really use him in the Hall of Legends. And that's his downfall. I mean, if he was good in those areas of the game, he would have been uh, OP as hell. But right now, he's really, really good in the arena. He's actually in pretty much all of the top arena teams in my server. Uh, another catch the rayman is uh he's a purchase hero he's a special ubisoft character so it's it's it costs a lot to get him but if you do have him he's one of the best uh, heroes in the game for the arena right now let's break down his awakened ability here because uh, it's a really good one so rayman reduces the amount of time nearby ally heroes are affected by enemy control abilities uh this is unique you don't see this anywhere else in the game uh, it reduces control abilities by 3.26 seconds. That's a quite a bit guys All right, so it can definitely change the tide of a battle. That's why a lot of people use them in a, you know in the arena He's got an extra life ability. He leaps around and smashes heroes which kind of distorts their positioning a little bit and Then his ultimate deals aoe damage. So he's good all around like I said before in the arena I don't really want to repeat myself too much, but not that great in Hall of Legends and you don't really use him for your raids. He's just a really good arena hero. So if you really do need a good arena hero. And you're willing to dish out the cash to get him. This guy is great. Um, that's why I put him this high on my rankings. Just because of his you know, powers in the arena. But that's Rayman at number 7 for you guys. Now let's go out to number 6. 
Now, at number six is a hero that's essentially completely opposite of Rayman, all right? I got Ling Ling here at number six because she's not that great in the arena. You don't really see her in the top tiers in the arena, but what you do see her at is the raids and the whole of legend. So she is terrific for both of those. She's essentially a must-have character in the game right now. And the great thing is that you don't have to pay it all to get her. She's, you know, a free-to-play character right now. You can get her in the Crucible of Fire Wagon. So that's a great thing. Um, now, other than her boobs, she's got a lot of other great assets, guys. Her ass. That's another great asset, I mean. Her abilities are great. Let's move on. Uh, let's just start from the top. I'm sure you guys all already have her. But her ultimate is one of the best ultimates in the game, all right? Now, what... If you don't know how to use her ultimate yet, it's very easy to use. There will be a circle that starts out really wide and it starts to narrow down on her avatar. If you can click on the circle as close to her avatar as possible, it will actually give her both of these abilities. So the first ability, if you click on it when it's too wide, she will give your whole team a physical and a magic attack boost. If you click on it when it disappears, she will give your team a uh, physical and a magic armor. If you click on it right in the middle, she will give your team both of those boosts plus a shield, which helps out a lot in the Hall of Legend and in the raid. So that's why, you know, makes her really, really powerful. She is great. But let's take a look at her Awakened ability here and see how this affects her. Uh, Ling Ling throws baskets and vegetables at the enemy who draws too close, stunning them and dealing physical damage. Now, essentially, this sounds great and you would think that it's really good in the arena, but right now, it's not helping out too much because Batman, Volko, all these heroes are able to get back there and kind of destroy her. And a lot of times, she doesn't even get her ultimate off. If she does get her ultimate off, she's a great hero for the arena as well. The catch is to get her ultimate off and it's really, really tricky right now. That's kind of why she's not used in the arena, but like I said before, Hall of Legends and Raids, she is a must-have hero, guys. If you have Ling Ling, she's got to be a priority, one of the top heroes that you should be working on, and that you actually should start her awakening as soon as you can, unless you have one of these other heroes that are coming next. Alright, guys, so coming in at number 5, we've got the big monstrosity, Petros. This guy was uh, crazy insane when he was first released, OP as hell. Uh, they kind of nerfed him down a little bit, all right? Uh, so now he's just not OP, he's just P. P for Petros. And uh, this dude is a beast in the arena. He's really, really good. He's usable in the Hall of Legends as well. Not so much in raids right now, but Hall of Legends you can use him. And he's great in the arena. But he's also a double-edged sword. I will explain what I mean by that in just a second, guys. Because he can hurt, help you out a lot and he can also kind of hurt you in the arena. But let's go ahead and break down his abilities and show you what I mean really quickly. So uh, his ultimate is a really, really good ability. Volcano, he just tears up the ground and then he just flings everybody in the air, dealing some good damage, knocking them back. And the great thing about this is it kind of spreads everybody around as well, which is really, really good. Not only that, but this turns the whole battlefield into a volcano for 20 seconds and it makes his attacks, his other attacks, a lot better too as well. So that's a great thing about that. Now let's, play, uh, let's take a look at Earth Smash here. Earth Smash, he just uh, smashes the Earth, as it says, for three times and deals some AoE damage to everybody around him, which is a really good ability. Uh, Burning Coal is also really nice. He throws coal all over the battlefield and then the coal will explode on non-moving targets which is great that deals a lot of damage now this is the ability that's kind of uh, really great and it also kind of hurts him a little bit so let's take a look at this real quick so the blessing of the fire spirit so what happens is he gets blessed by the fire spirit which is increases his physical attack physical armor and magic armor and he becomes immune to control abilities however if he dies whoever kills him the fire spirit is now transformed onto them so they have these uh you know buffs on them and it kind of sucks because uh, most of the time the hero that killed him is a really powerful hero and he gets this blessing as well he's tough to beat it's really hard to beat that hero so that's kind of why a lot of people have taken him out of their arena teams of their main arena he's definitely really usable if you hide him in your um you know epic arena teams still but in your real arena teams if he dies most of the time you might end up losing the battle because uh, your opponent is going to get a nice boost off of this um now let's break down his lava burst this is a great ability here so lava the lava contained in petros body burst out dealing damage to enemies that are attacking petros from in front from in front of him that's the catch it doesn't really work if they're attacking from behind 
Uh, the damage dealt by this ability is greater once Petros has taken a certain amount of damage. Now, the great thing about Petros is before you have awakened him, he might seem like he's not a good hero at all because that's what a lot of people thought when he was first came out. Uh, he wasn't doing much damage and he just wasn't living up to expectations. But you have to awaken him first to really realize how powerful this guy really is. Because that's when he reaches his full potential. The reflect damage that this guy gives off is insane. That's why he's great in you know the Hall of Legends and that's why he's great in the arena too. All heroes that attack him will take a lot of damage. And a lot of times they just kill themselves. Um, uh, I use Sylphie a lot of times in the arena against him and uh, her swarm attack she gets killed by her own attack because it keeps doing damage onto her and um, another great thing is the fire spirit his fourth ability like i said once that's activated control abilities do not work on him and that's why he resists kara's ultimate like i said before but uh, overall this guy is still a great tank he's a really good hero in the game so you you make sure if you have him you work on him you awaken him and if you don't have him as soon as he comes out guys you want to have him because he's one of the best tanks in the game right now all right moving on to number four mira is coming in at number four because this chick is phenomenal one of the probably the best backliner in the game when it comes to the arena you don't use her anywhere else really she's just great in the arena guys she's a new hero so i don't know if everybody has her yet but i'm just giving you guys a, a foreshadowing kind of a future thing if you're gonna plan on getting her in the future she is phenomenal let me just say that now the reason why she's coming in number four is because she's really hard to kill in the arena because of her awakening so that's why i say you gotta awaken her you know quickly if you have her she's gotta be one of your top heroes to awaken because let's break down her awakening really quickly mira's revenge it's essentially kind of like uh Kara's in one way when she takes a lethal amount of damage mira is able to block this damage and gain a small amount of health and automatically trigger her ultimate so that's a lot of things happening all at once. The amount of health gain depends on Mira's star level. The ability can only be used once per wave. So this ability is so powerful. Obviously, you can only use it once. But that's all you really need because by the time that somebody's able to kill her, it's almost at the end of the battle. And if she can just dodge a one-hit KO at the end, gain some health, she will trigger her ultimate and just do a ton of damage to, uh, to somebody. So that's what makes her really, really powerful. And essentially makes her the best backline hero in the game. So that's why you need to have her. You need to awaken her as soon as you can. I would awaken her before all the other heroes that I've mentioned so far. That's why I have her at number 4. And uh, that's pretty much it guys. She's just a great arena hero. Lacks in raids and the Hall of Legends. So if you're looking for somebody, you might want to awaken somebody else for those departments. But for the arena, she's your girl. Alright guys, so we're coming down to the wire now. This is number 3 and it's Vernos. He just doesn't go away. This guy is a beast. Now, if you're wondering why it looks like this, it's obviously because I got the skin on him. This is a special skin for him if you were wondering. But, now let's take a look at why Vernos is so good. Uh, first of all, the way to get Vernos, guys, is very unique. He's, it's, he's a unique hero to get. Him and Aqua are the same, but... You have to have 7 star heroes in order to unlock them first of all. You unlock a special shop when you have extra soul stones. So when you get a 7 star hero and you're able to get other extra soul stones above that, you can sell those soul stones for, you know, uh, exchange them for Vernos. So that's the only way to get them. And uh, he becomes one of the best heroes in the game in the raids and in the Hall of Legends. Essentially, he's a must use in the raids and he's usable in most of the Hall of Legends, guys. In the arena, he can still be usable, but not in the top tier arena teams. Just lower tier arena teams, you would say. But mostly for Hall of Legends and raids, this is why you you would have Vernos on your team. Let's break down his abilities really quickly right now. So his ultimate, uh, Weapons of the Forest, he's able to summon three different types of poisonous plants. Not poisonous. One of them is poisonous. One of them will give off energy, and another one is uh, dealing magic damage. Uh, that's where he gets most of his damage from. Once he uses his ultimate, he completely transforms from the front of the arena. He goes all the way to the back, sets himself into a tree, and then starts planting plants that are able to dish out all this type of damage, which is great. And it really, really does a lot of damage in, you know, the whole of Legends here. Natural Shield just builds a shield either on him or uh, one of your teammates. It uh, increases their health and increases their physical armor. So it's pretty good. It's uh, definitely usable, but it's not um, a game changer. Poisonous Vines. This is pretty good. This one is going to entangle three heroes for four seconds. And it does 
um, damage over time for 4 seconds. So it's pretty good, but it's not really that great. It does help out when you're facing heroes that move around a lot, such as uh, Ezio, Prince of Persia, Volko, heroes like that. This definitely will help you out in some situations. Uh, his fourth ability, Seed of Life. Increases max health of the plants he summons when he uses the ultimate. So this one is kind of a, a, a buff to his ultimate. And that's kind of why he's really that good. It's all because of his ultimate. Uh, now let's take a look at Ice Bloom. This is his um, awakening ability. And this makes him a lot better. While using Weapons of the Forest, which is his ultimate, Vernus will upgrade Poisonous Blooms to Ice Blooms. When the Poisonous Blooms are upgraded, they will uh, regain all of their health. As well as increase their physical attack. Uh, physical hit bonus and attack speed with the ice bloom shoot poison at the enemies It will also have a slowing effect that can be stacked uh, until the enemies is completely frozen So this is really really good chapter 15 or 16. I'm not sure which one it is with Ethera. It really really helps out once the poisonous um, uh, Blooms turn into ice blooms there. They freeze her up and she really has no chance She's trapped for the rest of the battle. So he's essentially a must-have character for that raid um, and uh, that's kind of why it makes this guy a lot better is because he freezes them and he deals a lot of damage to your opponents in the raids. The ice now doesn't work on Hall of Legends, all right, guys? So it's kind of useless in the Hall of Le Legends. But nonetheless, he still dish dishes out a ton of damage, so he's very usable in Hall of Legends as well. Uh, if you find a place for him in the arena, you can definitely do it. You might have to hide him a little bit. And especially if you're facing an arena team that's able to hit your backliner really easily. He doesn't last too long, but if they're not able to get to the back line, they could be in a lot of trouble, you know, once he gets his poisonous uh, blooms to turn into ice blooms, he's going to start freezing everybody up, and uh, essentially, it's very, very dangerous if you don't have a counter term in the arena. The problem is, there's a lot of different counters to the back line or heroes right now, so that's why you don't see him in the top tier arena teams. Anyways, this is Vernos at number 3, now let's move on to number 2. Alright guys, so coming in number 2 is the hero that I've been kind of mentioning this whole time in this video and that's Volko. The reason why I mention him all the time is because this dude is a freaking beast. Not only is a sick hero, um, essentially a must have hero in the arena, but he's great in raids chapter 16 and 17, the last two stages. This guy is a beast, he's on all the top teams in there as well. Incredible hero to have, uh, if you have him, you're very lucky because he's not a free to play hero right now, he's not released. If you don't have him. Uh, he should be getting released, I don't know when, but pretty soon because he's been out for a while. And uh, this guy is going to just take your arena team from here to here right away, alright? Now let's break down his abilities and see what makes him so good. Uh, Art of the Kill is an incredible ultimate. It just, he vanishes guys and then he just unleashes a series of long distance physical attacks against the enemies. And it just does a ton of damage. I mean, it's crazy. Not only that, but it also has a silencing effect to the heroes that, with, that are within a uh, range. So it's really, really good. This Most of the time, heroes that don't have much HP or have a weak armor, they're, they're killed, really. And um, it, it works really, really good in the Crucible of Fire as well, all right? So it's very useful in Crucible of Fire, Arena, and in the raids right away, right there. Um, concentrated Threat is very annoying because he will go into an uh, invisible state for a little bit. While he's invisible, he cannot be hit by any attacks and his physical attack rating will increase. So this one is annoying uh, because a lot of heroes, once he goes into the state, they don't see him. They turn their backs on him and start attacking, you know, your enemy units to the other side and then all of a sudden he becomes invisible again and then goes into a bloodbath right here and attacks a hero from behind and when it does hit them from behind uh it does additional damage and if it hits them from behind two times it will trigger bloodbath uh and then if bloodbath is triggered all it does is it does more damage and then volko also increases physical attack rating so uh, a lot of things are triggered if he can hit an opponent two times from the back right so it's uh, very very good deceptive strike he just dashes behind um an enemy and then deals a really really heavy physical attack all right so all abilities as you can see are pretty much all attacking abilities that's why he dishes so much damage and in the arena he's really really hard to kill um some counters to him like i said before are single target damage dealers uh, Kara is a great counter to him. The problem is if you can stack Volko with Rayman, a lot of times Rayman will take Kara's hit and he resists it. That's why it's kind of hard to kill Volko with Rayman on the team. Just a couple of different situations that I'm giving you right now, but let's break down his ultimate, guys. Whenever uh, one of Volko's attacks has a bloodbath effect, which we just read before, Volko will earn one point. 
Once he earns two points, he will unleash a devastating physical attack. All right, so you already know Bloodbath. If he can attack somebody two times from the rear, it will, uh, you know, unleash Bloodbath. The, the problem is this ability here is crazy powerful and it's really, really hard to actually activate. So what he's got to do is attack somebody twice from the back. That gives him one point. And then if he attacks somebody two, two more times from the back, it will give him a second point, which will then uh, activate Obliterate. Uh, it doesn't get her off all the time, but if he does get her off, this is a crazy ability. It deals a base of 2,200 damage. That's one of the you know highest base damages in the game. So it's very, very powerful. And that's why it makes Volko really, really strong. He's just insane in the arena, guys. Like I said before, if you have him and you stack him with Rayman, it's tough to kill. If your opponent is using Ray, uh, Volko, though, there is some counters. Uh, you can try to entangle him. You can use Kara against him. That's kind of what I do. I love using Kara against him because she normally, if she if she is awakened like we read before, she will not die. She goes to sleep, comes back, and then she will get an ultimate off, which typically will kill Volko. So that's one counter you know, against him. But other than that, he's one of the best heroes in the game, and that's why he's at number two in the awakening. So be sure you guys awaken Volko as one of your top priorities. <laughs> All right, boys and girls, so we made it to number one, and if you thought it was anybody else, then you're crazy, because there is nobody else in the game right now. It's Batman. This dude is number uno all over the arena. You don't use him in the raids, and you don't use him in the Hall of Legend, but this dude is absolutely OP in the arena right now, so you must he's a must-have character. Uh, the trick is, he's fucking expensive as shit. I don't know if you want to pay for him, if you can afford it or not, or you want to wait for maybe one day they will... I'll release him. We don't even know if that's gonna happen at all. But just take a look at his chest and his freaking shoulders. They're jacked. This dude just kicks anus all over the place. And uh, I mean, boy, this guy just becomes insanely good even when you awaken him. So let's take a look. Even before awakening, he was really good. But with an awakening, this dude is insane. So let me just break down his awakened ability here. So the Beyond Suit, which Batman wears after his awakening, benefits him in multiple ways. The hit rate of his attacks become extremely high and the damage he takes is greatly reduced. Um, just crazy, man. I'm just going to go down his abilities here. Justice Served is insane. So pretty much when a... Uh, when your opponent is very, very low on health, they're about to be killed. Instead of being actually killed, he just uses this ability and he just picks them right off the battlefield and they're gone. It's pretty insane. Uh, but the only ability that you really, really need to look at is his ultimate ability. This is crazy. Uh, as soon as he uses this, the bat signal is activated, the, the, the whole screen turns into Gotham City, and then this guy just unleashes a series of attacks to everybody near him, and it just does so much damage, guys, it's crazy. Um, I'm not sure exactly how many hits it does, but they're all each 800, a base of 856 damage. That's crazy, it's really, really, really powerful. It's insane. Uh, if you take a look at his stats really quickly, he's got a base you know, a uh, physical attack of 5,300 plus another bo boost of 1,400. So a total of 6,700 is insane right now. Volko's is actually higher, but Batman is definitely a lot better. He survives a lot longer and it's really hard to kill Batman in the arena. Uh, you can get him by Kara. He doesn't resist her abilities, uh, but she won't even kill him with her ultimate. That's how powerful this guy is. I mean, uh, you can see that I'm kind of just, you know, drooling like a little schoolgirl over him right now because he's so good. Uh, he's, everybody's got him in the arena. If you're trying to be at the top, you've got to have Batman right now. Uh, and if your server doesn't have, you know, a Batman at the top, at least one or two spots, your server is defunct. Doesn't even count. But <laughs> that's just my opinion, guys. That's because he's so OP right now. Uh, maybe one day he's going to be nerfed a little bit, maybe. But I still think he's going to be really good, you know, in the long run. He's just one of the better arena heroes in the game. If you are looking for variety, you have a lot of different options out there. So if you uh, have a choice between Batman, let's say, or Vernos, and you're kind of just looking to do really good in your Hall of Legends and just do better in your raids, then maybe you go with Vernos. But if you're trying to just jump, you know, the arena with Batman, you gotta go, I mean, in the arena, you go with Batman because he will take you, let's say, if you are in the hundreds, you will go down to maybe top 20 with just him. I've seen him take out teams of five, one on five, just by himself with his ultimate. That's how powerful he is. So he's a really, really great hero, guys. Uh, if you have him, I'm sure you're gonna love him. And uh, 
that's pretty much it. All right, guys. So that's pretty much it for my top 10 Awakening Heroes here. I hope this helps you guys out. And, um, and let me know in the comments if you think there's somebody else that should have been in the top 10. Like I said, this is my opinion. This is just from experience. I know there's a lot of other heroes that are really, really great. But I just went with... 10 heroes who would help you out in a lot of different situations in the game guys alright this wasn't all just heroes in the arena or in the raids or in the hall of legends that kind of went with heroes that will help you out throughout i'm sure that you have somebody that you use in your arena team all the time that you think is better than somebody else but you gotta also think that are they also great in other facets of the game right now you know so think of all different options that's kind of why I went with this list, all right? So that's about it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. Please leave a thumbs up. That'll help me out a lot. And I will check you guys out on the next video. Till then, have a good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Peace out, everybody.